and we wanted to contribute to something positive and to help turn people's minds around a little bit, you know, get out of the funk of the COVID, the COVID funk, awesome. which is not very funky to listen to. It's actually yeah, shitty. It's the opposite of funky town. Yeah. It's, won't you take me to COVID town? No. Tu amor y tu beso, mis amigos bueno, y siempre una fiesta, y a ti, te quiero bonita, tu eres mi chica. And you are about to enjoy the Maharaja Flamenco Trio. Feliz Dias. Since 2010, so this is our 11th year together as a group. You know, lots happened in between that time, right? We've grown a lot. We've we've developed musically. We've developed, you know, just individually. Yeah, been through many many rough patches and very very many happy patches. You know, it's been a while since we released our first album, so um, in a lot of ways, it's it's been a work in progress. So we were thinking about writing an album. It's been a while and we've been working on music. Unfortunately, we all have full-time jobs and, you know, working hardcore. And things kind of fell into place in around 2019 where we were kind of all at a place where like, okay, you know, we're at a stable enough place where we can really focus and, and develop a new, a new album. We all have to find times that are convenient for us to get together. So guess what? I think COVID presented a lot of challenges, just like for everybody. And from those challenges came growth, right? 2020 just kind of provided this wonderful opportunity for us to get together, start really dedicating time to this material, writing the new material, arranging it, coming up with everyone's parts. But because COVID, um, really put us in a position to where we were quarantined. We had an, a lot of opportunity just to be able to fellowship and really kind of formulate um, a project. During the coronavirus, we were forced uh, a bunch of time, a bunch of free time was forced on us. And um, we decided that we should start recording. How did Maharaja Sundays play a role? Maharaja Sundays was a really fun experiment for us to kind of do things where we're not just streaming concerts, but we're also talking and, and discussing things. It was it was awesome. It was a nice way to interact with the, our audience and provide some sort of material and content for them. So just because no one was doing anything, you know, everybody was cooped up. You know, obviously I was being more of an observer, uh, but uh, my role as a producer was to be able to evaluate what they were doing on a weekly basis and also to provide feedback. Um, and it definitely helped us kind of streamline our whole approach to what we're doing. I mean, they were playing live, doing extraordinary things, and so I was able to follow up with them afterwards and just tell them great ideas that we might consider implementing. To go and do these live stream concerts with the new material and to have that real-time feedback from people responding.
So COVID, uh, as you can imagine, <laughs> posed a lot of challenges initially. We were originally thinking of doing this album, being able to um, continue with touring and performing, which that stopped. No one was doing anything at that time, so we, we had to offer something, and it was also something also for our, uh, I think, sanity. <laughs> You know, we had to get together, regardless what happens, you know, pandemic or not, we had to get together, so we did. It really allowed uh, for us to really understand and respect and just celebrate and just fortify brotherhood. In one way, it was a lot of challenges with like, okay, now we have to shift uh, a lot of our mindset. Um, but in certain ways, it provided opportunities to focus that energy into creating this album. We started getting together. We realized that all of us were safe. We didn't go out of the house or anything like that. We were all teaching from home. And uh, so we, we, it was pretty safe for us to get together. So uh, Ramin came from Tallahassee and uh, David from uh, South Florida. And uh, over here in Gainesville, in the kind of like halfway in the middle, um, we all uh, at my house started recording this album. I think a lot of the, the stress, a lot of the confusion, the chaos, you know, it, it uh, making music, you know, is always a, a therapeutic way for us to just deal with things in life in general. And it was definitely the case with making this album. I think without having this as a creative focus um, for us during this whole time, things would have been more difficult. A tornado hit Sylvia's home, and uh, so that that was a big event um, that kind of like threw us into a new space. But the new space was actually had a beautiful view of uh, the lake here, Lake Wahlberg, and in a lot of ways that kind of inspired the album. We saw, you know, we were writing this material and we were seeing so much suffering in the world and so much injustice. Uh, and we wanted to contribute to something positive. The nature that's around this area, I think really influenced you know, the album and uh, the feeling of, of the songs and, um, and eventually, as you'll see, like the artwork of the album. So um, it has been said that relationships are the currency of the kingdom. And so I think, uh, you know, the ability to be able to harness relationships better um, and you know, just foster it and cultivate it. I think all of that has been tackled really well. I think uh, you know, we've really pushed the boundaries of musicianship. So you take Maharaja and then flamenco, obviously, into seeing folk music. The hybrid of that. What was the intention originally behind the hybrid? Well, the original Roma people, um, they are from northern India, from Rajasthan. And so uh, this music in its core roots comes from India. There are many styles of music that are blended within this flamenco album. Uh, you know, it's truly a global celebration. So it's kind of like reflecting and honoring that the people and the tradition of the Roma. Uh, flamenco has is, is always been, you know, a fusion genre, right? It's picked up. Uh, music, musical styles, cultures, languages from that great migration from northern India, you know, all the way across the Middle East, Europe, uh, North Africa, you know, eventually settling in, in the flamenco styles of like Andalusia and, and southern France. I think, you know, everybody has uh, something fresh to take. I mean, there's funk elements, there's Latin jazz, there's straight ahead jazz, bebop, there's blues. There's, uh, you know, um, even just soul music, you know, soul music of not just the Americas, but of so many different countries around the world. And I think it uh, made an awesome recipe for 
a version of flamenco music that just does not exist. It's really exciting. We are so happy to have such amazing and talented collaborators for this album. Jose Valentino came in, did amazing work with us, helped capture all the instruments and the sounds and his engineering skills, but also contributed some amazing performances as well. I also served as mixing engineer, really worked with Silvio, um, and uh, also multi-instrumentalist. So I just wanted to add, uh, you know, my take on all the songs and what they represented uh, by an extra layer and a voice. And you know, I also participated in uh, the orchestra that uh, was here, you know, the uh, North Florida String Orchestra. It was a lot of fun. So it was a really beautiful experience. And Tanya Molavan also performing on the album, Jeff Brooks, lots of great talent. Trio is uh, truly a collaborative experience. I think it's part of our philosophy, right? Especially how I approach my work as a producer and as a missing engineer. I like people to be involved and really just um, their opinions to be weighed and measured, if you will, but um, you know, uh, just to be celebrated, you know? So they, there's really an interplay uh, between all of us. And we really needed that collaboration to fully realize this material because it couldn't just be the trio with some overdubs. It needed a little, some of this material needed more, more sound, you know, more different kind of soundscapes and textures than what we usually do. Silvio, I love the way Silvio sings, you know, he sings with such intensity, such urgency, you know, and he just really has the blues in his own way. Neither David or Amin can sing as well as I do. So, you know, someone had to do it. I sacrificed myself. <laughs> uh, this is a person who has lived, um, you know, life extraordinary. Oh, when I was in Spain, I started singing as well. You know, um, flamenco is a whole like way of living and it's a whole like art form containing many aspects, you know, the baile, the dancing, the, the, the cante, the, the singing, the, the, the toque, which is the, the flamenco playing of the guitar, then the jaleo with the claps and all of that stuff. So before I even started to learn how to play flamenco guitar, I had to, you know, for quite a while, uh, learn the compas and the styles, the, the palos, the rhythms. You know, while many people might assume that the guitar is his main instrument, I personally um, have uncovered that his voice is truly something otherworldly in many ways. It makes you feel home, it makes you feel at peace, it makes you feel like a sense of comfort. I was learning all these other aspects, uh, so I, I was like, well, I really enjoy the singing, and I was already singing in choir back home, so I've had some experience singing, but um, then I've tried putting some bands together and no one could sing, you know? Uh, so I was like, all right, I'll do it, you know? So I started learning how to sing and then I took some lessons while I was in Spain a little bit too. Nothing as crazy as the, as the guitar, as the depth of my guitar studies there, but it was just kind of like another side passion that I enjoyed doing. Uh, we got uh, the extraordinary bassist, David Cobb on the electric bass guitar and also on the electric uh, bass viol. We have uh, Silvio with, you know, doing amazing stuff on the guitar, but then also with the claps, the jaleo, the singing. I mean, it was just really awesome. And then you got Ramin, who is a wizard of global percussion and uh, the didgeridoo. And I mean, he's just such an amazing encyclopedia of information. Can you catalog all of the instruments so there was a lot of new instruments that kind of came out of this. This didgeridoo, uh, this hand pan, this frame drum, of course this beautiful uh, sizzle uh, cymbal, chimes, darbuka, 
shakers, all kind of different percussion, palmas, you know, and, 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 and of course, the cajon. So Himalayan bowls, gongs. There's also another beautiful ocean drum. So it's nice to kind of feature, you know, those uh, instruments. It's also a big part of like who, who we each are, you know, and what we bring. So that, that kind of energy is, is translated, I think, in the, in the music. So, you know, I, I took on a variety of roles on this project. My role as a producer, uh, I essentially want people to, you know, feel welcomed, feel uninhibited to reach their full creative potential. And I, uh, you know, I gave a lot of opinion throughout the entire process. I mean, the entire time of recording this process, I was making the phone calls, making the connections, and bringing in um, the associate producers, co-producers, and uh, communications team, uh, post-production communications team for the album as well. And so, uh, you know, throughout the entire process, I was there, I was recording uh, as an engineer. I was, um, you know, teaching them how to uh, record themselves and how we can collaborate. I was, at times, guiding them so that we can even switch roles and I even got Silvio involved as a co-mixing engineer for this product, uh, and he did really extraordinary. Dave Cobb served as an associate producer and also as an arranger on this album. Really awesome work, and you know he's just an extraordinary mind. Ramin served as a recording engineer uh, in addition to um, doing the percussion and the didgeridoo. The final stage of the production process is mastering engineering. And as producer, I wanted to make sure that I got Boris Milan. Boris Milan, hailing from Venezuela, is actually an eight-time Latin Grammy Award-winning mixing engineer, among many other accolades. He was able to bring cohesion and make it sound like one collective story. You know, on this project, I ended up getting another team uh, involved in this process uh, to be able to just strengthen the communications, the global outreach of this project. We got the amazing Donna Scott, who's doing wonders, you know, with uh, global education, because all of us are educators, we're professors, we're, you know, uh, scholars, and, and we just love teaching and impacting people in whatever way possible. We also got uh, the amazing Vladimir Suarez involved. We got uh, Jorge Castro involved. We got uh, Gabriela Soto involved as well. And, um, you know, just a lot of amazing people. We're so excited to have as our co-producer, Henry Alonzo from Adarga Entertainment. Henry is an amazing entrepreneur. He's a professor uh, as well as Azusa Pacific. And, you know, he just really has a mind for strategy and just how to really take projects to the next level. We got Bruno Miranda involved as well. So it's just a, it's just a really cool celebration and um, just really excited about everything. So the album is released, uh, was released on May 28, 2021 on all digital distribution platforms and streaming, and the role of the EP. Well, you know, it was three songs, and I had this idea of just uh, releasing as a teaser because I felt like, you know, there have been a lot of people that have been waiting and anticipating, and perhaps people that did not know about this project. There's three tracks, um, three cuts from the album that are really strong and show kind of the diversity of the sound that we're, we're working in. This is not just an album. This is not just an album by any means, this is a movement. And I think it's a movement of bringing happier days. So we just, the whole intention behind this uh, album is, is to help, to, to purify, you know, to, to um, inspire and to um, just really provide some sort of, uh, you know, 
wonder and beauty in this life which is not at this point the most uh, <laughs> those are not the most uh, prevalent points like, in our life. Like a hand sanitizer. It's kind of a hand sanitizer, yeah. Like Purell. Yeah, but like salmon flavored. <laughs> Thank you.